today we have another video on the ADI part one and um, this time some questions on mechanical knowledge and these questions I think are particularly tricky because the DVSA officially say should all the answers and the revision should be doing should be based on on these books that we've shown you before but the problem is most of this information is not in these books and they're quite technical questions, some of these things. You really need to know about cars, of how cars work, and some of the, the principles of how some of the mechanisms work on cars. Um, so we're going to have a look at some of these questions. I'm going to leave in the description below to links to some videos that will help explain how some of these things work on the cars, because um, they're probably going to be better explained than me, because I'm not a mechanic. But the people on the videos are, so they're a bit better explained than me. So let's get started. So the first question, we start with a quite a simple one, because it actually is in the book. Um, how often is it recommended to check your car brake lights? Um, and it is going to be in essential skills. So there is bits of information in essential skills. So for example, let's just get my camera back up. Um, so on page 348, it gives some information on vehicle checks you should do. And every day it recommends you check um, things like your lights are working, including your brake lights. And yeah, so that one's quite a simple one to start with. So the next one's getting a bit more tricky. So what is one of the benefits of disc brakes over drum brakes? So you need to understand about how the different brakes work on cars. Basically, I'll try to explain briefly, but let's have a look at the videos in the description for a bit more of a detailed overview of some nice pictures and diagrams. Basically, drum brakes are a very old-fashioned type of brake, where there's, essentially, as you might guess, a drum, a metal drum, and inside that drum, there's the brake pads. And when you press the brake pad, it pushes the brakes out and stops this drum from turning, this drum being attached to the wheel, that's part of the wheel. Um, a disc brake is where, as you might guess, the, there's a disc that's attached to the wheel and the brake pads clamp onto the disc as opposed to pushing out on the drum brake. So brake discs clamp onto it like a base on a bicycle and a drum brake pushes out. So drum brakes are much cheaper to produce because they're mechanically simpler um, but the problem is because it's all in, the, these brakes are inside this drum it's not got any access to air, so it is more prone to overheating. Where drift disc brakes are exposed to the elements, so they're going to be access to air. So if they get hot, the air is going to naturally cool them down. And when brakes get hot, this is what then we call brake fade. It can lead to what's called brake fade, where the brakes get too hot and then they become less effective. So the answer to this is going to be one of the benefits of disc brakes over drum brakes is they're less prone to brake fade. Hi guys, I thought I'd just show you this book to add to your collection. The New Driver's Handbook. It's a free in one book and it's got some pretty good reviews from a driving examiner and a driving instructor. It has over 800 practice theory test questions, common driving test faults, driving test general tips and advice on dealing with nerves on the big day. Finally, it has tips for after you've passed your test, including vehicle maintenance and driving abroad. You can find a link to this book in the description below. Now, back to the video. Let's look at the next one. Um, in what conditions might ABS be ineffective? So again, more questions about brakes. They do like to ask about your brakes. So you first need to know what ABS is. So a lot of times people at first get confused and start calling it stuff like anti-braking system um, and things like that, but it's not. It's anti-lock braking system. Anti-lock is hyphenated, one of those little dashes, anti-lock, that's the A, B, braking, S, system, anti-lock braking system. Um, and basically what it does, when you're braking very harshly, like in an emergency, there's a chance that when your brakes go to the brake disc, or the brake drum, if you've got brake drums, that the brakes could lock, to lock basically, and then the wheels will suddenly stop turning, which isn't good, because that's like applying your handbrake, 
when you're moving. The wheels, the rear wheels, when you pull your handbrake up, it'll lock up just the rear wheels, and then the rear wheels, because they've stopped turning, the back of the car will spin out. So without ABS, if you were to brake very harshly, the wheels could lock, and then you could basically lose control by the wheels locking, you could skid. So, um, and what ABS does is once the once it feels like the wheels are locking and the brakes are locking, a, si a sensor will realise that and automatically take off the braking pressure to allow the, the wheel to spin again, and then automatically reapply the brake, and then take off the pressure, reapply, take off, reapply, take off, and so on, very, very fast. And it'll have the effect of um, making sure the wheels don't lock or reducing the chance of the wheels locking. In the old days, you used to have to do the braking like that yourself, what they call candence braking, where you had to, if you're braking hard and your wheel's locked, you have to come off the brake to let the wheel spin again. Then reapply the brake. If they lock, off the brake. And then when, then back on the brake. If they lock, back off the brake. So on, off with your brake pedal. Like so they call candence braking. But this ABS, it does that job for you much, much quicker than you could do it with your foot. So if the ABS does kick in, you would hear the car making a funny noise, like a sort of noise, almost like a drilling noise, which is the brake going on, off, on, off, on, off. And if that happens, just keep your brake pressure applied until the cars come to a stop. So with that kind of my sort of explanation of that, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Um, the answer is basically going to be on surface water, because it's going to be about brakes and your gripping of the road. So that's not going to be affected by the time of day and if there's fog on the road. It's going to be affected by the road surface you're on. Um, so if you've got surface water, um, the car will not be able to grip the road properly. It might kind of almost float on top of the water, what you call hydroplaning or aquaplaning. And that basically mean the, the brakes won't be as effective and the ABS won't be as effective because it can't grip onto anything. It's just floating on top of the water and the water's not got any friction to it. So the answer is going to be on surface water. So next question. What does a spongy foot brake indicate? So again, more questions on brakes. So this one's a bit harder to explain in words. So I'm going to refer you to one of the videos in the description. But basically, if you've got a spongy foot brake, where you press the brake and it kind of just, it's like, it's like pressing a sponge. It's quite hard to explain, but it's like if you're pressing a sponge with your foot. Um, the answer is going to be air in the hydraulic system. So, next question. What causes heavy steering? So there are going to be questions about steering and tyres. So... Heavy steering is caused by overinflated tyres. Sorry, not overinflated, underinflated tyres. So, underinflated tyres causes heavy steering. And next question we've got, I believe this is the final one, is where might you find a catalytic converter on a vehicle? So, you might know this one, um, you might not. Again, you have to have a bit of mechanical knowledge, a bit of kind of understanding how cars work. A catalytic converter is basically in the exhaust system. So it's as part of the exhaust system. It's basically there to try to make the fumes in the car cleaner. Um, so reduce pollution and um, air pollution and things like that. Hopefully they gave a bit of an idea of some of the questions I might ask you about mechanical knowledge. Sorry if my explanations weren't too brilliant. But let's have a look at the videos in the description and it will give you a bit more of an idea of what sort of things you need to know about. So I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching and bye for now.